All right, shall we get started? Hey, my thought here is, um, my thought here is that we just go, let, let's just start bringing people up because last time um, we cut off early, there are tons of people waiting. Um, I don't think anyone needs to hear my spiel again. Uh, Happy Cat has it, has it recorded. So if you missed the last one, um, go find it there. Um, so yeah, let's open it up. I see, I think I see a few people who at the top here, Diamond Hands, Happy Cat, there are a few people that we told we would get up this time. So let's, uh, let's start with those guys. Okay, we're bringing up Mr. Diamond Hands to get started. What is up? You there? Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, thank you so much for having the second space, guys. I really, really appreciate it. I won't take too much of your time, but I have one question, and it's a question on everybody's mind as far as the wallets of TFL, and, and mine included. Will TFL assist us, if need be, when it comes to you know the USTC that is still Will you guys, if we need it, help us or work with us to provide us a list of wallets, you know, containing these coins and, you know, helping us with the process of, of burning these? If you can't burn them yourselves, uh, will TFL be able to assist us with that? Thank you. Yeah, I know there was some. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for the question. I know there was like some consternation after the last call. Like, well, how do we know if they destroy their keys, which is rational? That's a reasonable thing frankly i was just so focused on trying to to get the settlement on the luna that i didn't really think about it so yeah there's i thought that i had thought that the wallets are already public through the bankruptcy process it turns out that they're like partially redacted um so one of the things we did is i went back and just checked with the attorneys like can we just burn the lunk and the ust as well and it turns out that we can or like i'm, I'm almost certain that we can so that we don't have to argue about like whether the keys were destroyed or not, because no one knows. Like even I couldn't say with 100% certainty that if we destroyed them, that someone else didn't have them or someone didn't hold on to them or something like that. So yeah, we're going to try to just hang with, I, I'm like almost 100% certain that we could just burn that as well while we're going through the process. Um, you know, there, there might be some like like dust that I'm, I'm not going to waste time on because it's, it is a huge hassle to get all these keys out and like do all the work. But, um, and then I think with regards to just like sharing all of the um, addresses, I think we can do that as well. Uh, just so you know, like, again, you're kind of like taking our word for it at that point too. I'm just trying to think of like the counter argument that someone's going to go on your space later and say, uh, there is, there is a, so what, what I do understand is that there is a list of wallets that's been published, but they're like partially redacted. So you can at least see like how many wallets we have and you can kind of cross check against that. Um, like what we burn, like if you were to go find that in the bankruptcy filing and then you just kind of monitor the burn address and see everything that's going into it, you would be able to like very easily process an elimination. Say like, these are wallets that didn't have, that didn't get emptied to a burn address that were in the bankruptcy filing um, that are still out there. So, um, yeah, long story short, I think we're going to be able to get everyone comfortable. It'll take a little bit of time because um, nothing moves quickly in bankruptcy. Um, but yeah. That was going to be my next question is, is a time frame on it because that's kind of like the big, that's the major question on everybody's mind. You know, will they burn keys or coins? It sounds like you're going to burn the coins. And then what's the time frame on it? That was going to be my next question. Thank you so much. Yeah, conservatively, let's say like a few months just to give me some buffer. Um, I don't think it'll take that long. I would love to get it done a lot sooner than that. It's just, um, I don't, I'm not, yeah, it's not completely. What's up? You there? You're muted. Oh, I think it was dropping me still into the space. Um, did you, oh, okay. did you, was it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. You're oh, oh, awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, kick anyone in the balls or or anything like that. Everything is what it is at this point. But I think it's really important that 
you guys understand the way that you leave this space it's so important so I, i've got two questions and, and one of them is to do with lfg is lfg you've stated that you don't have control over it duquan has control over it but it's a confusing because i've heard different things that that you've mentioned so is lfg going to be included um in that wallet list and with that wallet list are you able to provide the memos because the the list has cx wallets in it and i think that's what the redacted information is so here's the, here, let me be very specific on LFG. Um, for some of the wallets, TFL controls the keys on behalf of LFG, but we can't make any decisions because none of us are on the board. Doe controls LFG. The whole settlement with, um, the settlement with the SEC regarding LFG was a Doe settlement that we had nothing to do with. Now, if we're told by whoever is legally in charge of it that to transfer tokens or something we would do that right like do, if there's a legal process that tells us to do something with it to the extent that we're capable of doing it we would comply with that legal process so um so that that is what it is but like we can't just make a decision to go do something with lfg assets and we've never been able to right the only thing nothing's ever been done with those assets since the defense of the peg they've just been sitting there until recently we moved them to fire blocks because it just is a way safer way to, to custody these things. Um, sorry, uh, uh, remind me again, did that answer? Oh, and then the, the list of wallets for LFG, those are already public, right, Mark? Mark Chan, can you thumbs up on that? I mean, we could share them again. Yeah, if you uh, if you if you guys could share them officially, that would be great. But what we've we've got our own kind of money flow system. We've got a lot of wallet logs and wallets that are mentioned in there in that list pertain to actual CX hot wallets. Uh, one of them being a an old Binance hot wallet. So what I my thought was there's simply just memos missing or something like that, Chris. What um okay so so first and foremost. Yes, we've the, the the wallets for LFG have already been public, and I think like have you have you looked at like the LFG website or the Twitter account? I thought we published a dashboard where you could see all of them. Or I think that's been out there for a while. There, there is a dashboard. Uh, we can reshare. Last, it. I want to say the last tweet from uh, the LFG Twitter had it. The last thread about moving to the Firebox thing. I think it now has that the, the link in it. You know, that said, that's going to be like the historical wallets, right? Because now we've moved it into a custody solution. So I don't, I don't know like what the tracking is on that after we moved it over to Fireblocks. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's kind of my point uh -huh. here is the, the wallet list that the LUNC community has managed to find um, in the court documents. We, we have a list of wallets, Chris. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that specific list, but, but that's the list I would like you guys to, to get out there confirmed. Not the LFG stuff. I've covered that very broadly and, and gone into also the schedule of digital assets released by the court um it's it's that actual list that's floating around uh vegas uh was one of the people that that originally brought it forward um all right i don't know wait so are you asking me i don't want to go too into the week look we, we don't we have no problem sharing addresses like we're not trying to hide anything no one did anything with the assets so are you talking about lfg wallets or are you talking about uh, TFL wallet. I am literally what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it um to this space just just for ease of everybody okay. here um and then and then we can all get on the exact same page here. I'm just going to share it in. Whilst that's uh, pinning up there, Chris, uh, can we quickly go to my last question? Then you can go back to this. Is that okay? Sure, sounds brilliant. Good. Thank you. Okay, it's just pinned up there. This is a quick one. So with Station Wallet, I can see that they're in the space. There's a there's going to be a situation where everything's kind of like auctioned off through the correct routes of what's expected of you guys to do. But is there a situation or a, a scenario where the Luna community and the Luna Classic community could possibly acquire that together, considering it's so important to both ecosystems? You would have to be able to put together a bid. Uh, like it, it has to be sold through the bankers, right? Like I can't even, I can, I have no control over who buys it, where it goes during a bankruptcy it's important that there are like no conflicts of interest. And so everything, um, yeah, everything has to go through the bankers and I'll have no real say on like who gets it or, or how that's going to work. But yeah, if you guys want to, anyone can bid, right? So if you want to put together a bid, um, send your contact information to uh, Mark Chan. Um, and then what we could do is we can connect you with the bankers and then you don't need to like have the bid now. You need to just like, have some idea of how you would get to one and then 
uh, yeah, you just go through the process with the bankers just like anyone else could. So yeah, no one's excluded from, from bidding on this. We want to get as many people involved as possible. Thank you so much for those straightforward answers, Chris. When that time um, starts approaching, if you could kind of like give us a little heads up, maybe that would be brilliant. I know you're very limited on what you can and can't no, say. No, no, no. But let me tell you now, the time is now, right? Like if you want to get on the list of, because we've got to get this done in the next few months. So if you want to get on the list, if you think you can put together a team that could bid for this asset, I would get your information over to Mark within the next week or two. So don't don't wait to hear from me. Time okay. Is now. Okay. Um, so the, yeah. the document's pinned up the top now, Chris. Um, you can see that there's there's two pictures there. It's the one on the left-hand side is what I'm referencing. This is the list that's currently going around. Yeah, of the TF. This is TFL plus LFG wallets. Okay, so let, let's split these up into two different things. The LFG wallets, there's going to be a dashboard. Look on the LFG um Look on the LFG Twitter account. We can, you know, Stephen can go in and, you know, re, uh, Maybe he could just post it as a reply to this space, Stephen, when we're done. Um, so then, then we have the list of like TFL wallets. And remind me what the issue is again. We, like some of it's redacted, and so it's hard to see. Yeah, so it's when, hard to know. When we ran checks, uh, myself and Strafe Cole, we covered it in a video as well. Um, that that some of these wallets are actually their CEX wallets. So. And they've got like serious amounts in, so we're, we're confused as to how these could be TFL or LFG wallets if they're also CEX wallets. And, and we've confirmed oh. that these are CEX wallets. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, I was getting confused by CEX. So centralized wallets. Yeah. Um, I'll need to follow up on that because I don't even know if we have access to those wallets anymore. Um, Yeah I, I, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Mark, I don't know if you want to hop up and talk about yeah, that yeah. a little bit. C can you hear me? Sorry. I can, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah, so uh, the list the list of wallets um, used for, um, or rather the list of wallets for LFG is, is a really short list, to be honest. I, I think if you can count it with two hands, it's less than 10. Um, it's all the wallets that are used uh, to populate the dashboard that you see today. Um, most of the LFG assets are AVEX or um, BNB anyway, meaning to say, um, I, if let's say um, LFG has $100 million worth of assets today, 90% of it will be covered by AVEX and BNB. So if you're looking for just like the value of assets held by LFG, most of it are concentrated in those two addresses. I think what we can do is um, we can try to coordinate uh, you know, a tweet to publish like the list of addresses that are used to publish uh, to maintain that dashboard that's on the LFG account. And um, yeah, I mean, right now there are already two addresses up there which consists of the AVEX and BNB. We'll follow up shortly with the, the rest of the addresses which contains um, the BTC, the USTC, and the Luna Classic assets. Okay, real quick, uh, Diamond, Mr. Diamond Hands had uh, something. Uh, yes, gentlemen, again. thank you so um, much. <clears throat> yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to ask, ask this as well. Thank you so much for bringing me up a second time. Um, Chris, you said about the wallets in regards to you know, holding the Luna Classic and the USTC. Um, would you guys be all right? You know, you said you have some wallets that you may or may not have the keys to. Would you be in favor of, say, you know, on our end that we blacklist those wallets and burn if you're not able to do it yourself uh, just to speed the process along and to kind of assist us and do we need to get a team of people to be in charge of that to communicate with you or how could we make that happen thank you so much no look i think it's your guys's chain so you guys should do whatever you want with those wallets um so yeah don't don't worry about us thank you Okay, great. Uh, we're gonna bring up some more people. Uh, 
just by, by the way, if anybody wants to um, request to speak, this is the time. Uh, so, so get up here, just request to speak, and we'll get you up. Hey, I think there was someone Redline or something like that that has been wanting to get up and talk about LFG as well. He said, I, he said I, was, I think he said I was too scared to bring him up, so we got to specifically bring him up. All right, Redline, <laughs> you are the next speaker. Sorry, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, I suppose I know you can't really talk too much on the LFG asset side of stuff, but that's kind of what I find is more important to our community. Um, sorry, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, I suppose I know you can't really talk too much on the LFG asset side of stuff, but that's kind of what I find is more important to our community. Um, so I understand that we're not going to get the LFG assets aren't going to be returned to the community. Um, but like one of the things that LFG promised to do was return those assets um, back to the holders, back to the USDC holders. And that's just not happening, is it? Like it's been used to well, pay the judgment against... I think but, I think that yeah no I mean I I think that that was the thing that Doe wanted to do right like just to be clear like Doe had said that he was going to try to figure out a way to do some kind of like take the assets that were in LFG and give them back to um, the holders the original, way. yeah the, the original Terra Classic community and my. But my understanding, and you guys can go read the docs, is that the settlement that the LFG assets that were part of the settlement um, are reserved specifically for um, crypto claims. And crypto claims are essentially the, the claims that you're, those are essentially the, the people you're talking about. So I think like even in this settlement, he was trying to um, make good on that promise. I have no inside information on that. I haven't talked to them or anything like that. But so if you think about a bankruptcy, there are multiple types of claims, right? There are going to be people who come and say, um, you know, like I cleaned your office and you haven't paid me yet or whatever. We, we don't have a ton of debt, but you know, there's like those types of claims I or I saw but, all these systems have a claim in. <laughs> Well, yeah, but but there and then there's going to be like the crypto claims are like one category of the claims that are going to come in. And my understanding, you guys, you know, I don't want to be called, I don't want to be told. I, um, my understanding, go read it for yourself, is that the LFG assets specifically uh, were reserved to ensure they go back to crypto claims. So, you know, okay, it, yeah, um, that's so, fair yeah, enough. Like, I mean. If if they're going back to the, the holders that way, I mean, I don't think anybody can really dispute that, I think. But a lot of people saw the judgment, they thought those assets were being used to directly pay, I think it was interest on the bankruptcy judgment or something like that. But I mean, if they're being ring fenced for the holder, I don't think many people would have a problem with that if they ultimately are going back there. I, I believe they are. Uh, you guys have access to the, the, the paperwork. Go look, go look at it. Uh, I wouldn't read the whole thing. Throw it in... Throw it in. GPT or something and get it to tell you what's going on. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I think that's what's happening. And frankly, I think a lot of the TFL assets will, will do the same. I think a lot of the TF, I think the vast majority will. So, um, but yeah, I think it was yeah, just a worry. That it, it was just a worry that it would be more the institutions that would be getting it rather than the individual holders or the smaller guy, basically. Um, oh, like it's I see what, I see what, I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like which of those claims get it? Um, that I can't tell you, but it is going to crypto claims. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, look, it's disappointing for the classic community in one sense because there was kind of some route to recovery you, if those funds are available to us. But I mean, if they are ultimately going back to the holder, I don't think any of us would really, really have any problem with that. And we'd have to find another approach, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think you, I mean, you got to be, I mean, this is just me speaking personally, you got to be realistic about the hole that has to be filled and how much it's actually going to be. Right. It really right. depends on right. it depends on who claims and you know, there's a version of this where it's not a ton you know, you're not gonna get made whole or anything, but yeah, it'll at least do it'll at least be directed to crypto claims. Like, because I mean, for us, like when we were looking at it, like there was the way the LFG, the reserves were gaining in value, like there was enough in it to actually back USCC to market price and you could have reverse split it and 
started fully back then, do you know what I mean? Which is something that though, if he had achieved full collateralization, we probably wouldn't be speaking here today, do you know? So in one sense, it's disappointing, but if it's gone back to the holders, I mean, I don't think we can argue with that. Uh, that's really all the questions I had. So thanks, Chris, for taking the time and for bringing me up here. Okay. Uh, Robert, Robert, next. Who's up next? Uh, Robert. Okay. Okay, hey, uh, hey guys, thank, thank you, and Chris, thank you. Um, I just was curious on what's going on with the folks who are on the vesting schedule, you know, post DPEG. Is anything changing with that? Is that schedule still happening in terms of majority of tokens being released between kind of now and middle of 2025 with Station Wall? I just, I wasn't sure if anything was, was oh, the, uh, us yet. Thanks. Do you mean the, um, wait, one second, you mean the um, community grant that TFL got? No, I'm talking about just the individual like holders are on the original Luna, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the relaunch, yeah. I don't yeah, know of any, yes. I don't, Sorry, I don't yes, think, the relaunch. Yeah, no, I don't think anything changes. Okay, so does that schedule you you anticipate to stay, even though you know you guys won't be kind of? Yeah, it's all. I mean, it's all. And, okay. No, it's all programmatic. I mean, it's just yeah. Whether the the wallet's there or not, um, you know, it's vesting to your wallet. It's whether the station wallet is there or not. It's still vesting to your. Uh, crypto wallet. So. Got it. Okay, great. Yeah, that was all I had. Thanks, Chris, and uh, good luck yep. with everything. Take care. Thanks, man. Okay, we're going to bring Survivor up here. Reminder, if anybody else wants to speak, just request. We'll get you up here. So you just get the invite survivor. Maybe not. So we'll bring Dion up as well. Whoever connects first gets to ask the question. Oh, Dion, it looks like you're on. Uh, oh, you're yeah. Thank you. Uh, nice question. So I, I wanted to talk about uh, revenue. Um, is Station Wallet uh, making any revenue on the whole thing? I uh, know Station. We didn't put any um, any fees or any revenue in Station Wallet. So, um, so, so yeah, TFL right. is actually making no money on the chain whatsoever. TFL is making no money on the chain. Let me think about this. Um, I'm going to be very precise. Because I know someone will come back and, you know, do some fucking 17 point thread about how I'm trying to mislead people. Um, all right, station's not making any money. Yeah, I think the only I think the only thing you the only way you could say TFL is making revenue on the chain is the community grant that we received right now is staked, and that's generating staking rewards. Um, so. You know, but we're not, we haven't sold a single token, just to be clear. We haven't sold a single token of anything that was given to us. Um, and all of that's going to be burned. So, yeah, no, there's no. Am I missing anything, Stephen, Mark? Any, any gotchas on that? No. Okay. Well, that was the question. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks for coming up. Hey, Frederick, I just added you as a speaker. Welcome back, Frederick. What's up, man? Hey, man, so, sorry, just a follow-up question. Is it possible sure. for us who live in uh, outside of the US to do the claims as well for the- I believe yeah. so, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Keep an eye out, um, we'll post from the Terra account. Yeah, it's not just a US only claims thing. 
I don't think at all. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Next we have um, David. Hi, everybody. Hi, Riz. Thank you for having me. I've got a question about Terra.money website. I am the, the part of Terra Classic community, and we struggle with, with, with virtually not having the, the you know, official or whether unofficial website. And I would like to know what, what are the plans with your website, whether maybe both communities can use it in the future if you will shut down. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, I, I, this is something we're working on. I Unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you right now. Um, and we will have an answer at some point. Uh, I understand that it could be valuable and useful. Um, uh, but it's complicated, I guess I would say, is the most I can say. Um, uh, so I, I don't yeah. have an answer for you right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand. Even though that there are even you know, straight copies on the internet, I don't know if you, if you are aware, aware of that, but already people did it. But yeah, I understand. I'll be looking forward to... Well, yeah, I mean, it's not the code. It's not like the code that's, compl that, that's complicated. It's the domain, like whether we would be able to sell or transfer that domain or whether it needs... Uh, to be shut down completely. Well, that's it's kind it's, of out of mind. It's both the domain and the website itself, right? It will speed up, for example, our process of creating the website, the Terra Classic community. Maybe both communities can have one website, uh, can use the same, you know, design that, that you really have the same, the same. Actually, oh, got it, same got author, it. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, if you're talking about the front end code, I, I hadn't really put much thought into that. Um, uh, to me, like the domain was kind of more valuable, and it, the domain. I'm worried about the domain that, like, if TFL just shuts it off and it goes on the open market, bad actors could get it and um, do bad things with it. And so that that's kind of the primary thing. I haven't thought, thought about like what we could do with the code. It might be open source, um, but what my the my primary focus now, my my initial priority is just making sure that whatever happens to it, whether it's transfer to the community or shut down? Is it, there's some way to keep it from getting into someone's hands who can use it for a scam. So uh, I'm focused on that first. Um, we'll, we'll give some thought to the code. Yeah, I, I completely agree that this is very important, the domain itself. But like once yeah. again, for, for us, this, the website as a whole is also, also important. Thank you very much. I'll be looking forward for news about this somewhere next. Or, or so. I know, yeah. good luck and thank you for ha having me. Yeah, sure, thanks. Uh, we actually have a related uh, question that I've seen in the community a little bit. Uh, same question, but for the Terra Twitter handle. Same answer. It's co okay. complicated. So working, working on it, looking into it. Complicated, yeah. Okay, good uh, to know. Uh, we're going to bring up Sebastian. Sebastian, you are up. Hey, Sebastian, what's up? I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. so um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the transition moving forward um, from TFL, you know, being in charge of development and maintenance of the chain um, over to the community, right? So <clears throat> it would make sense to me, and I think you've mentioned this before, that there are at least some devs, TFL devs, that still want to contribute um, to the development, right? And to me, that would be the most seamless transition, I suppose, if they were to somehow organize and either go for a grant or something like that. But I guess I'm, I'm just wondering, um, will you guys be helping with this kind of handoff transition? Will we, will we be able to know who these devs are? Um, what, what does it look like? Yeah, so TFL can't help with the transition. Um, my understanding is that those devs, or that dev, potentially, um, to be more specific, and some other people in the community are already coordinating on all of this, um, and that you guys will be seeing, um, you know, that, 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 a, lot, that a lot is going to get hashed out on the forums soon. 
but I'm not involved in it. I can't be involved in it and TFL can't be involved in it. Um, but since all this stuff is decentralized, um, you know, you guys will, you guys will have to work on it. But my, my understanding is there are people working on it. I haven't been involved at all. I don't really know who it is. Um, but yeah, it'll be up to you guys to, to find a solution to the community to, to figure that out. But what, what I wanted to do and the point of the settlement, the way that I did it and, um, was to ensure that we had the time and space for that to happen, which I think we do. Can you, I mean, can you confirm that there are some TFL devs that, that want to stay on and keep contributing? Are you aware of that? Um, I don't want to speak for anyone. Um, yeah, I don't want to speak for, any, for anyone. I would, because I, I haven't heard it firsthand. Um, I've just heard kind of rumblings about it. Um, but I would watch the forums. I do know that, that someone's, that, that, that you should be getting information soon. All right, fair enough, sir. Yep. Yeah, sorry, I can't say more there. Steven, do we have anyone else? It helps if I don't mute myself while okay. I'm talking. Uh, yes, Trader Rocco, is, uh, you are up. Hey, Chris. Uh, thank you for holding this spaces. I wanted to ask you about sort of the long-term vision for Luna. I don't know how much you can speak about it. Um, if you were still in position, where would you have liked to have seen Luna in two years' time? What could success for Luna look like? And the second part of the question is there's... Lots of talk, maybe a lot of meme here about merger between Luna and Luna Classic. I'm not talking about the merge. How could potentially Luna and Luna Classic uh, work together in the future to help both chains? Yeah, you know, I think... Look, I think, I think everyone who's been following what TFL's been doing knows kind of the vision that I had for, for TFL and how it could contribute to Terra and to Luna specifically, or, or like, as a result. Um... I think it's really, you know, everything we did, everything we did was for the benefit of Terra, um, you know, after the arrest of Doe and doing the best we could to build innovative products that would bring attention back to our ecosystem and allow it to thrive again. Um, and, and, you know, leading up to the trial, it was, a, it was about putting us in the best position to capitalize on a win, right? Um, in order to drive that attention and to, like to, to do this redemption arc story if we could win. And, you know, leading up to the trial, there are reasons to be hopeful. Um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out. And, and some of the reasons that gave us hope worked, didn't come to, the, some of the things we thought might um, materialize to help us win didn't materialize. Um, and so like my vision, that was my vision, right? Like that was my idea. That, that was what I was able to contribute, um, with Doe being gone, um, was like a, an innovative product suite, um, carrying forward the torch of Terra having the best UX UI in crypto. Um, and then using that to then, you know, and I think you guys saw that I was doing kind of the pre rounds. For before the trial of getting on the different podcasts and everything like that. And then like after the trial, um, if we had won, I had all these relationships built and it was to go out and go big and tell the story, right? Um, the redemption arc. And that was hopefully going to bring people back. Um, I think now um, it's not up to me, right? It's up to the community. And there, there's definitely like a community threat, community chain narrative um, if the community can come together and, and continue on, I think that's a big deal. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think I would refrain from saying what I would do. I, it doesn't matter what I think anymore. It's up to other people now. Did you have a second question? I can't remember. 
Yes, and the second question was um, how could potentially Luna and Luna Classic work together, right? Because Luna Classic's been a community owned for two years. Uh, Luna 2.0 is going to be community owned as well. I guess there'll be a lot of similarities. I know there's probably technical differences. Um, overall, from a casual investor point of view, they'd be both community owned. How could potentially they, they work together uh, to benefit both chains? One second, shit. Oh, God. Um, sorry, I just got a message that's not good. Um, so sorry, your question was, um, your question was like a merge. Oh yeah, it was merge, right? Look, I think, yeah, um, yeah, look, yeah. look, I think the different communities have different assets. Um, I think if there's an opportunity to bring those assets under one chain, it would make a lot of sense. I don't think it makes sense to have both. <laughs> It's going to be, I don't, I don't want to say it doesn't make sense. It's challenging to maintain a chain, right? And to the extent that you guys can figure out how to combine resources and combine energy and combine communities, um, I think that's powerful. Um, I think there's an opportunity there. Um, I haven't put a ton of thought into it, but, you know, when we were rebuilding Station and everything else we wanted to rebuild, and when we were trying to rebuild the Terra brand, we were always... I think um, trying to be helpful to the the Terra Classic community as well, and I know there are a lot of people who care about it. And so, um, I think there are ways for. I think I think there are ways to co at least combine under a single on a single set of technology, just to reduce the amount of overhead and burden and security costs and everything else that it takes to to maintain this stuff, and then you know use IBC to get. Get to let you guys focus on whichever assets are, are most important to you. Thanks, Christian. Yeah, obviously, sure. yeah, obviously, like I'm biased, but you know, I think Terra is that chain, um, just given the amount of development that's put into it um, over the yeah. past. Yeah, I think I guess years. my question was a bit more on working together rather than the merge because. Luna Classic still has a big community. Um, I know Luna's got lots of smart people, developers working on it. So it's more about how we can like work together um, in the future to help both communities. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, you guys gotta, you know, ideally figure out how to cooperate. Um, so, but I don't, I don't know that I have a lot, of, lot to add, a lot of value to add there on how to do that. Okay, thanks, Chris. And thanks for hosting the spaces. Yep. Okay, Survivor got through this time. So, Survivor. Hello. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll just uh, get straight to the point. Uh, my question is um, more about have you talked to, like, have you had a chance to talk to Duquan recently? And is he, like, allowed to engage with us? or join any of the spaces in the future? Or is he being refrained from talking to us for, for any reason? Thank you. Um, I'm not, I have not spoken to Doe. Um, and no, I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't know his exact, like his, his like ability technically to get on a space, um, but I don't think that would be advisable to him. I think that Doe needs to, um, Oh, Doe's got a lot of stuff he needs to sort out, right? And so he needs to focus on himself right now, is, is my guess. But yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any particular insight or, or, or communication. Thank you. That's all the question I have. Okay, next up we have... Uh, oh, oh, they dropped out. Hold on, going through the list. Uh, Raider. Okay, Raider, did you get the? Hey, hey guys, can you hear? There me? we go. Uh, yeah, I can hear. You. All good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, so, I have two questions. Uh, my first question was about. Foundation. Uh, obviously, this is, this is a infrastructure platform that you guys have been working on for some time, and it, it's pretty fundamental to uh, everything you've been doing. 
Uh, so it, it would be be interesting to understand what the plans are in terms of that because it wasn't one of the assets that you listed for sale. Oh yeah, it's, it's a good question, and you're right. Like God, enterprise or foundation was so critical to everything we were doing. Station V three, enterprise, uh, Pulsar. You know, foundation really was a rebrand of Pulsar Data, which was a product that the Pulsar team had under development before we acquired them. Um, and so, you know, when you hear us talk about Pulsar, um, foundation is kind of bundled up in that. Foundation is a big, is foundation is kind of like a very important part of the value proposition of Pulsar. Um, and so, yeah, th those are kind of the same. Uh, for simplicity purposes, we just say Pulsar but it includes all of the infrastructure data product stuff that we were building. Okay, and, and in, in terms of uh, what's happening with the, with the, you know, the, uh, uh, the shutdown process, what's gonna happen to, to Foundation and what's the timeline for that? Um, well, Foundation would be sold off as part of the Pulsar acquisition. I see, I see, okay, right, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so do you anticipate that, I mean, obviously it's difficult for you to say because you don't know what the, what the uh, vision of whoever acquires it will be, but do you, would you anticipate that it would still be made available as a, as a resource uh, within the Cosmos space? Or do you think that it might become something that's more of a, of a private service? No, I think it, I think that whoever buys it, um, you know, I can't say for sure, but, um, the value is in making it available yeah. uh, to people. Now, I mean, obviously whoever buys this is going to have economic or will probably have economic reasons for doing so. Yeah. Right. And so they're going to, they're going to, they're going to want to monetize it. And yeah, you know, we were going to monetize it as well. We were just going to make it free for Terra builders yeah. and then monetize it for, for everyone else. Um, you know, depending on who buys it, will they still make it free for Terra builders? I don't know. Um, depends on how many friends they want to have. But um, uh, um, yeah, but I, I think yeah, it, I think it'll still, almost certainly still be available for um, the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Yeah, yeah, thank. Thank you for that answer, Chris. That's uh, that's great. So my yeah. my second question was about the uh, the delegations that you did to the active set in uh, uh, as a result of the community grant that you received. Uh, presumably, those are going to be undelegated as part of the uh, the court process that's been uh, decided. Could you give any kind of timeline on that? Yeah, they'll be undelegated, and then they will be burned. Yeah, uh, through community proposal, I think. Um, <sighs> the timeline um, longer than I hoped. <laughs> um, I, it's just it, we need it needs to be uh, approved by the court. Like everything we do has to be approved by the court. So it could be a few weeks. So to so to undelegate has think. to be approved separately, and then once it's undelegated, to burn it also has to be approved. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be approved separately. We just need to like go get a right, okay. thumbs up to do it all all, to, all together. Okay. Yeah, okay. but it needs to be everything we do need, with assets needs to be approved just to make sure that we we're covered. Okay. Well, the the, the yeah. final thing I'd like to to mention is that uh, as a member of the Hexagon team, we we operate Galaxy Station Wallet. So that wallet is available to the the Lunar community if they wish to use it. Uh, it's an interchain wallet forked from uh, from Terra Station. It has uh, additional features that we've built into it, and so that wallet is there as a as a resource for the community if if they uh, are looking for a wallet that they want to use. Nice. Which uh which version of station did you guys pull? Uh, your V three station. Oh, you did. Okay, interesting. Um, well, good luck. Thank you. Um, treat it nicely. We of course absolutely. Um, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah. I'll go take a look. I'll, I'll go take a look at that as well. Yeah, yeah sure. Cheers. Sounds Thank good. you. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Okay. We're going to bring Gigi up real quick. Hey, what's up guys. Uh, thanks for calling me up. You know, I think, it's, uh, I think, I think I don't want people to get lost like today, like, you know, I'm glad that we're getting these numbers settled and, and people are getting these questions, but 
But, you know, Tara really needs to, you know, reestablish what her identity is going to be moving forward, as Chris said. And we have these products. We have, like, Enterprise. We have Station. We have these core things that really are, I think, <clears throat> something special. And and um, I'm not sure what the bidding process is or how much interest is in Pulsar. But one thing I think would be crucial is that, say, say there is no bidding, but I, I think it would be beneficial to keep Pulsar and Station alive, you know, maybe a community pool pitch with some uh, aligned incentives, or we can get clever. There's all kinds of alliance module things. There's just so many ways to retain our products within the community. I don't want things to just be thought of like, hey, let's just sell it to the chopping block. You know, we're about to burn 15% of the supply. You know, that might drive value back up enough. Uh, the markets are shifting a little bit. I would like to see uh, more creative plays to retain um, uh, these builders in Terra. I would like to see these products continue to be built here. Um, the Pulsar team, I don't know, um, you know, their their capability of, of learning and expanding and cataloging blockchain, I think could easily be adapted into maybe chain health and maintenance with a dev or two from TFL joining them. Maybe Pulsar can become one of the managing uh, teams. I, I, I just don't think it's the right thing to think about like, oh, these are, let's just sell these things. You know, I mean, maybe maybe it's wrong. Let's drive Pulsar's price down for the next couple months and make nobody want to buy it and then just keep them. And then we can incentivize them. I don't know. Right. But I'm so I'm so I feel like there's a wrong attitude. The attitude. We got to fight. We got to fight now more than ever. Right. We got these products. I really do think that we are on something special. We got no more court shit over our head. And like, you know, what if Doquan does come back? We could light a fire again, but we got to be ready. We have to be ready, and the and the and the identity of what Terra could be moving forward, like especially with enterprise, could be this NFT fi you know business uh, community building hub that really does have a multi chain purpose and and it's an ultimate unifier. So so before we we count ourselves down and out, I really would like all of us to reassess and try to find some creative ways that we we unify instead of scatter. I feel like it's a scattering effect occurring and I'd like to maybe curb that before it it infects too much more um yeah so backbone has a, a real interest in uh finding creative ways to make sure enterprises um roadmap is carried out and uh, I've been speaking with the enterprise team and <clears throat> we have plans we have a kind of a big announcement I don't even know if they want to say it but I know staking nft staking live is live we've made a DAO we've made a uh, there's a little bit more work, but we've made the official uh, mad scientist stake uh, cross chain staking live. Uh, we, we also need to build um, another page so we can get Kepler and uh, Leap access. But I've also spoken to them about getting access and opening up the wallets uh, to, to enterprise to start to be more inclusive to the cosmos because this is the shift. This was always the shift. You know, I've talked to Chris a bunch over the years, and he's always had the vision of dApps that will crawl across chain seamlessly. Um, so this plan is just accelerated. That's all it is. This plan's accelerated and now we got to make the dApps that crawl and talk to each other's blockchain seamlessly. This is the next step in the evolution. It's just accelerated. So now's the chance for people and leaders to step up. It doesn't need to be a single person. I'm a fan. I'm not going to lie. I, I do like a leader. I think a leader... Uh, you know, solidifies the vision sometimes, but you know, if we all share enough of the same vision, like we did on the first round with UST and all that stuff, that was crazy. That caught everybody's attention. That vision was powerful, but we got a new vision right now. And the new vision is to build this, this decentralized economy first, right? That's the new way we're going to tackle this thing. After we get the economy flourishing, then we're going to come in with some other new sneaky shit. I don't know. I, I'm a fan of this, the algo stable. Let's not lose sight that this is a fucking fight. Chris, you did a great job trying to trying to hold this whole thing together. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like to inherit a sixty million dollar you know dumpster fire. Um, I appreciate everything you did for the community. <clears throat> you know, I mean, let's be honest, that. right? I appreciate it, dude. You know, you you were very kind to us. You've helped Backbone come from nothing. We are very grateful. We're grateful to everything that has occurred, the pain, uh, the good. <clears throat> But let's not lose sight of the, the focus. The focus is that this is a movement. This is a transactional freedom. 
dude, with AI and tracking, like all, everything's going to be, dude, we're all going to be marked out if we don't have good infrastructure. This is our chance to come together with good infrastructure. We need to be decentralized and censorship resistant. Let's not lose sight of what's, what's important. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Like the, um, the, the vision you just laid out is kind of similar to the one that I've thought about a lot where you can make Terra a hub for, and this goes all the way back to like what Doe talked about before, in like a hub for, for interchain commerce. Um, and enterprise, like it's just, you know, scratching the surface of what's possible there in terms of Terra being the hub, but operating natively cross chain. Um, I think Station showed what was pro possible as well. Um, you know, leveraging Skip protocol or Skip's API. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you know, Terra's going to need new people to step up. I appreciate all the kind words. Um, you know, could be the beginning. It is the beginning. When one thing, you know, we, when, when, when that crash happened, everyone thought everything was game over. But look, I look down this group of people and there's so many flourishing projects that have emerged and people that have stepped up and that's going to continue to happen. You know, we're, you know, we're just like in a purification phase. That's what, that's what's occurring right now. And, and, you know, right now we have another opportunity to set the tone and the standard of the space that we want to live in and have. So, so I don't know, this is like a rally call. Like people need to get imaginative again. What do you want to build? This is the place to do it. You know, the cosmos is the place to build, man. And right now, you know, Terra has one of the best Nakamoto factors. And if you think that's not worth something, you're crazy. So I'm definitely interested in carrying this torch forward. I, I ask anybody who's interested in doing that to, to come do, to join us, right? Backbone is interested in, in pushing forward what you, that we, you know, these things that we spoke about over the years, it doesn't stop, right? It just rotates. The new people need to step up. And I appreciate everything that you've done for the community, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm sure I'll be talking to you in a little bit anyway. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Okay. Uh, thank you, JG. Uh, Livingstone, bringing you up. There we go. What's the question? Can you hear me? Livingston? There you go. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, I have a, only three questions. You know, since the crash, the left is going hard. I want to know uh, how much do you, Luna, I, I, maybe uh, I was in here for the space for a long time, but I would like to know. How much lunar, lunar task um, uh, amount in numbers and figures you have and you're going to destroy? Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like someone else who isn't a TFL probably has a better number than we have because that is that isn't our focus. Um, but yeah, I, I can't really answer. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. And for how long are you going to destroy this? Overnight, five days, five months? Like I don't know how long it's going to take, but um, I think um, it shouldn't take. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that question. We just figured out that we would be able to do it rather than destroying the keys. But, you know, we have to do it before we shut down, which is this year. So, when, so what is your tomorrow through USD and the Luna Classic? What is your future on this? What is my future on it? My future, yeah, I'm done, right? Like TFL, uh, TFL is winding down. Um, because we lost the case and um, all of the, the world of potential penalties that we were facing was uh, greater than the amount of assets we had to cover it. So um, I would recommend, if you want kind of an overview of what's going on, I would recommend going back and, and listening to the video that Happy Cat um, recorded uh, from the last space. Okay, yeah. the last question. Okay. A, a last one, okay. Uh, through the, your agreement with your SEC about the, those 4.4 billion you have given back, we are the victims. What do you agree with them about us? You know, we are the one who lost this. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about that. Again, I'm sure someone's recording this. So you'll be able to hear the beginning of this. I talked a little bit about like what was going on with the LFT stuff. Um, you know, it's my understanding, and again, I'm not an attorney, my understanding that, uh, you know, that, that my, that like the SEC's intentions and my intentions 
for that were actually aligned in that it would go back to holders of the original holders of Luke and UST. Now, what ends up happening through a complicated bankruptcy process, I, I don't know. But I think, I think the intention of all parties in that settlement, which was why we were able to get one done, or one of the many reasons, um, was that, you know, that, a lar that the large pool of assets now, you have to be careful with that $4.5 million billion dollar number, though. Uh, there are there are not there is not four hundred four point five billion dollars worth of assets to go back to people, right? Um, so okay. yeah. So if we yeah, if we check our supply, for example, you check for uh, Luna Classic uh, total supply is about six point point uh, eight or seven trillions. Uh, where did you get those four point four billions to save that for the case? And keep for the sake, and uh, you lost, and we don't have a, a, a one billion to save with supply of Luna class. How did it come? How did you get this? Yeah, that, that's the point. Like, uh, I don't even know how much I can get into this. Um, but no, th there is not. There, it, that's a claim that goes to the bankruptcy court. There, there isn't four point five billion dollars worth. If we had four point five billion dollars worth of, of assets left over, um, a lot of things would be a lot different right now. <laughs> Um, so no, th there's not like, th because the headlines 4.5 billion doesn't mean that TFL has $4.5 billion worth of cash to get back. The numbers of assets, the amount of assets we have are public. You could go find them in the bankruptcy filing or ask Ray Raspberry. I'm sure he has them all. Uh, my question the point of the question is how, how, where do you get the, those money to save a, a case for DK? Don't know what I mean, step for DK but not saving the classic and the supply, the problem that we have as a community. That's what my question is. Um, Where did you get those amounts? I don't think I understand your question. And Steven, you Steven, do you understand it? So uh, I think it's a question around where where is this 4.5 billion? And that's been answered. It's, that's, a, that's a claim. We don't, we don't, that's not, that, that, those assets don't exist, not in that, that quantity. And then where they're going. Uh, I think you already uh, said that the LFG is for um, crypto, crypto claims. Yeah, and then, and then the uh, rest. Then, so the sum total of assets that are left in this estate when we when we wind down will go to a trust, similar to the Celsius Trust or the FTX Trust. And then what will happen is that everyone who has a claim against those assets. And a claim just means someone who says TFO owes me money for whatever reason will have a chance to file that claim. Um, and then the trust will go through and the bankruptcy court will go through and determine, I think this is how it works again. I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney. I don't, I'm not, especially not a bankruptcy attorney. Don't really want to do this again. Um, they'll go through and someone will go through the trust combination of trust and the courts will go through and decide like the order of priority for the claims. Um, and you know, they'll, what they'll also do is they'll go through and see if there are any other assets that they um, can track down. They might have lawsuits that they can do against other people or, or something like that, right, to try to get more assets. And then they'll start distributing based on valid claims that are presented against the estate. Um, all that stuff is going to happen probably long after TFL is wound, is wound down. Okay, great. Um... Uh, it's the it's on the hour. Uh, still have time to go for a little longer. Yeah, I have time. There are a lot of there are a lot uh, of uh, so many angry people on Twitter who said they were going to show up. Where are they? Where's Nacho? Where's oh, where's anybody wants to get angry? Where's Nacho? There. Well, we we have Vegas for right now. Right, Vegas, uh, you're up to speak. Yo, guys. Uh, again, great space and is, uh, first of all, I think it's, it's brave of you guys to just to, not brave, but yeah, it's, this uh, level of transparency is really good. Um, I have a couple of, um, of things. One of them, uh, regarding the, the station itself, is there any possibility that you guys can uh, or support until you guys close completely uh, Luna Classic? We are getting some uh, some um, reports that uh, people cannot util utilize it properly. 
Uh, and if not, is it possible to merge some PRs uh, on GitHub uh, if we if we find a fix for for making Luna Classic work there? We have options, like uh, Radar was saying, we have Galaxy Station and stuff, so we have loads of uh, options, but uh, the, the, the community is used to use Terra Station. Um, another thing, regarding uh, regarding the wallets, uh, like uh, the, the, the list of uh, wallets that I shared, they are from SEC, the, from the, from SEC, yeah. And the confusion that is uh, happening now is that some of the wallets are connected directly to, with uh, some uh, exchanges. Um, and uh, the people are asking uh, regarding if if that wallet was indeed from TFL or is one wallet that is from the whole uh, sex, yeah, and uh, you guys only have like a memo, like a, one of the part of the wallet. So it will be nice to have like that proper list so we can uh, know what what we can count uh, regarding the burning these assets. assets. Uh, and uh, you said uh, that uh, it will be possible for you guys to maybe you lost some keys. Uh, I don't like that. Maybe I lost some keys, but yeah, okay. I lost once uh, keys as well, so I understand. Um, but uh, if that is the case, for the wallets that you guys assume that you lost the keys, can you do publicly uh, tell the community that, uh, okay, we lost these keys, uh, the community is free to, uh, to, free to freeze these wallets or burn directly? Um, uh, this uh, this wallets on the on the chain is that even something that you guys can can uh, um, do? Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so I think I answered this earlier too. Like, um, I don't even know about the exchange wallets. Um, I can try to look into that um, when things calm down a little bit. Um, like what what like how they're set up. It's probably different by exchange. Uh, what was the other question? Um, oh yeah. Um, yeah. For stuff like, like we said, you got to keep in mind, like, well, you guys already know the circumstances under which we took over. Um, right. And so, you know, there, we didn't get the, the most normal transition. Um, I think for, for any, for any of the wallets that we can't burn ourselves. Yeah. You guys should just lock them or burn them or do whatever you need to do via community ground. So the, the, like those assets aren't going to move. Um, so, um, you guys have time to do what you need to do. Thanks. Hey, I think, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I think I forgot to answer your question about like, say, unfortunately we can't push code anymore. Okay. So the only, the, oh, the only code that I'm going to push, uh, between now probably and the wind down is to enable additional wallets on enterprise just to be safe. Um, so, um, but yeah, th that's it, unfortunately. So. Okay. It's what it is, mate. Thank you so much for answering. Yeah, sure thing. Okay. Uh, Jose, when I find your name again, there we go. Uh, Jose, you are up next. So did you get the invite, Jose? Well, we'll add Frag as well. Whoever gets up first can ask. Oh, Jose, I think you're up. Quando é que vão começar a queimar isso aí? Ou vão chegar um dólar? Quando? Só falação. Quando uh, é que vão queimar isso aí? Quando? That, that, that is, is that Spanish? I don't think that's Spanish. Portuguese? I don't know. I think yeah. it's Portuguese and he's probably no, not, asking. Not good, I'm guessing. Uh, Frag, let's go with you. Yeah. Um, if you guys, for, for any Portuguese uh, questions, DM me and I will give you uh, Miguel and Eduardo's uh, personal address, phone number, social security number, anything you need. Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Phil. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me in the space um, and um, up. Um, I wanted to ask specifically about the 
like all the technology and all the like technology technological like assets of tfl um i assume um these are all open source so um they are not going to like flow into the bankruptcy mass of tfl so they will not be like sold or something um, i'm specifically asking for alliance module um so like chains yeah. are still free to to use that software and integrate that into their chains um yeah, yeah anyone can yeah that's already no one's going to pay for that there's no business model anyway on alliance unfortunately yeah. uh, we should have called it something slightly different um and yeah that was a momentum thing for a while um the restaking stuff but yeah no yeah any i think anyone who has uh, i think alliance is already open source anyone can use it everyone should all right thanks You're welcome Nice and easy. Uh, you wanted somebody to be mad at you? Here's somebody called Emad. Excellent. Emad, come on up. Hello. All right. Hi, Emad. Go ahead. Luch, on dollar, on dollar, Luch. And I'm not going to be able to do that one. I don't know. That's Turkish, I assume. Okay, we'll try again. Uh, let's see. Justin. Let's go with Justin. Hey, how's it going? So oh, good. What's up? All right. Um, so just wondering if there's an update on Rap Luna and what's going on with that. Um, I think I don't even I'll be honest with you. I don't even know like the whole story on Rap Luna, but I think um, I think uh, Rap Luna will be one of the, the assets that would be included in like allowable crypto claims. All right. Uh, thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Sounds good. Cracking through them. All right, Ivan. Hey, I got to go. I do have to go here in a little bit. I think we're, it feels like we've probably gotten to the meat of it. Definitely keeping an eye out for a few people who pretty vociferously wanted to come on and say something that haven't showed up yet. Um, so for the record, we were here. We were waiting. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do maybe two more. Okay. Do hey Chris, just wanted to say thank you for everything you're doing, and um, thank you. Yeah, I was part of the the original uh, Luna Luna crew uh, back in the day, and um, long, long before me, I remember. Yeah, yeah, just um, it was a, a awesome community and super cool to be a part of uh, the purpose. Um, I think. I, I guess this is my question is that no one's really talking about, I mean, the, the whole vision of decentralized money was what brought us all together. And ultimately that's what led to its success. And then I think also the attack on it um, because it was so successful um, and the purpose of it, um, the peg was attacked and it seems like whoever attacked the peg, like, they're getting away with it. Um, there was nothing said in the court about about the, the attack on the peg. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I just want to, Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. And then, yeah. Sorry. I just I want to know from your perspective, you know, it seems like there's a larger game at play. And if just to, um, you know, from, from your perspective, um, was the trial fair? Um, and who are the actors <laughs> behind, behind, uh, the attack on the peg? And then, um, you know, are they the same ones that are behind the trial against Luna? Um, and you know, if, if, if this battle is to be, 
pursued without really knowing the strategy behind the people who are uh, keeping it from from succeeding. Um, you know, everybody can develop and they can, you know, unite the community and whatnot. But if um, if anything gets successful to the place of what Luna did, then the same strategy will be used to take it down. So um, I don't know. What's your thoughts on uh, on you know who is actually behind the attack and um, and now in the court system, you know, uh, battling through the court system to pull this down so that it it doesn't have legs. Um, what's your thoughts on that and how can this battle be fought successfully? Yeah, you know, I think um, I would go back and check the transcripts a little bit um, on the evidence I mean, it presented, seemed, it seemed like presented a, at uh, court uh, because like th there's a little more in there maybe than you're, you're alluding to on what happened and people involved, but I, I'm not going to, I can't talk about it. Um, Look, it seemed like a lot of it was centered around Chai and, you know, what happened with Chai and nobody really cares about that. Like everybody that was in the terror ecosystem, most of them, I would say 90% of them didn't even know what Chai was. So, you know, the whole. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I get it. Um, look, I can't talk about the trial. So, but look, we lost. I was there for every minute of it. Um, you know, the, tr the trial followed the law. And so I guess, yeah, it, it was a fair trial. And, um, you know, there was just, uh, you know, um, you know, there, there are a lot of allegations and, you know, no one there who had firsthand knowledge who could talk about them. And so, um, it was a tough trial, but it was a fair trial and, and we lost, um, you know, as for, you know, who was behind the DPEG and all of that, I can't, I can't say any, anything more than what's already kind of, uh, I would let you go to the, the source material from the trial, um, and, and draw whatever conclusions you would from it. Is there any possibility because, you know, the TFL is taking the heat for, you know, everything that the collapse of everything, is there any way that, I mean, TFL now is being dissolved, but is there any hope to find out, you know, cause <clears throat> everything's on, on chain, um, who is responsible for the attack and then for a trial to be pursued against the attackers of the peg. Cause they're ultimately um, the one responsible for, um, for the DPEG. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, the community. Look, I mean, I, 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 I can only speak in like high level, like not specifically about Terra. Um, look, I think um, if it was found that there was market manipulation, um, I think there are people who would pursue that um, in a pretty meaningful way. Um, I can't say if there was or not. Uh, it's hard to tell. My, generally what... Uh, Generally, I think what, what you would probably find if you dug into this is that it was a confluence of factors. And, um, but, you know, I think if, if, yeah. And so, look, even though TFL is going away, the trust still survives. So if, if, if the trust, which is looking to maximize assets, feels like someone didn't do something they were supposed to do or, um, did something illegal, they still have it long after I'm gone, they still have the opportunity to pursue those, those legal actions. Um, and you know, the trust sounds like it kind of sounds like some evil, I don't know. It just sounds like some kind of evil organization, but they're actually kind of aligned with you guys in many ways. Um, from this point out, they just want to maximize the value of the assets that are going to go back to, to, um, claims holders. And so, you know, they're incentivized to look under every rock going forward to try to see um, what they can find. You know, I think like with regards to like, you know, Tara was blamed for everything. I, I do have some thoughts on this I'd share. Um, you know, when everything happened, I don't want to get too long winded on this, but, you know, even I was concerned, like, dude, what happened? Like, what's the real story? So many allegations were flying around. 
Um, and it was really important to me. It was really important to everyone at TFL that we had answers on that and that you had answers on that. And so I just want people to know, like, it was critical to get that thing to trial, win or lose, and get the evidence presented um, so that everyone can see it, right? And even leading into the trial, you know, one, one of my objectives with, with taking over for TFL is like, look, I can't replace Doe. Um, I never said I, I could. Um, I didn't join TFL uh, for that purpose, right? I joined to work for the guy. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do was just make sure that the true story was told because I was afraid if TFL dissolved, that the, the true story of what happened would never be told. And I think if you go and look at some of the interviews we did or that I did leading up to the trial, you can see that there was at least when people really thought about it, there was a an understanding that what happened with TFL was different than what happened with some of these other situations, um, that this was an open source protocol and, and you know, that frankly, a lot of the people involved didn't think TFL did anything wrong, you know? Um, and so it was important for me to get to that trial, regardless of the outcome, um, so that we could have that, so that it would all be put out there. And then, you know, I think um, before it's all said and done, there will be more articles, there will be more books, and more of the story will be told. You know, a key, you know, a key character in this story, obviously, he can't speak right now. Um, and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense for him to speak right now because he needs... He's got a lot going on, but you know, someday he'll be able to tell his side of the story too. And I think that will have an impact on, on how people look back on this. But with regards to like, who did it, who's responsible, I, I'm not like saying, I'm not like hiding any thoughts from you. I think it actually was a confluence of factors. Um, and I don't, I don't have a ton to share. Uh-huh. When you say a confluence of actors, like it was uh, intentional. I, mean, I said factor. I, I didn't mean actors. I meant factors. If I said actors, oh. I meant factors. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well, Chris, I really appreciate everything that you've done and um, holding these spaces to, to bring closure to TFL and th th this chapter of Terra um, takes a lot of courage and uh, leadership and you did a, a great job uh, while you're holding the baton. So uh, appreciate it and thank you. Yeah, thank you, man. That means a lot coming from you. Yeah, I think we have two more. Uh, we have two more we can get to, uh, and then I got to go. Okay, Rio, you are up. Rio's back. Rio, by the way, gave me a hard time last time, um, but I sent him a note and thanked him for coming up because. There's a lot of people who are saying things that aren't getting up here and saying it directly to me. Um, you know, Rio and I can disagree about the job I did, but at least he's saying it directly to me. So welcome back, Rio. Is there a request going through, Rio? Are we having Twitter problems here? Let's see, let's do... drop to reconnect. Uh, let's do our other one and we'll get him up there. Uh, Meta Maverick, do you first. Um, Hello. It's bittersweet. Hi. Like, like, uh, like Ivan said, um, you know, I, I love that we're getting to have this closure, but it's also sad in some ways, but i um, excited for the next chapter um, for you guys. What's up? That, that was going to be part of my question, actually. Um, you know, I wasn't a Terra OG, you know, I've got a lot of friends in uh, Backbone and GMC. Um, and obviously, I've just had, you know, a bit of this space, a lot of talk about, you know, what happened in the past. Uh, but, you know, I know you guys obviously working with people to, you know, assist in the wind down and, you know, helping with things. Well, what's your guys' plans kind of moving forward? You know, once you have done that process, um, you know, I'm sure you spent a lot of time building, you know, what was Tara, you know, what what's next for you? Um, yeah, you know, I can't speak for anyone else at the team. I think everyone has a lot of different um, ideas about what they want to do. I know a lot of people are going to stay in crypto. Um, you know, for myself, 
you know, when I took this job and there's been a lot of people who there's been like a lot of discussion from people who don't show up to these spaces about like my salary. Um, but just for the record, that was given to me by Doe because he knew um, what this was going to be. But, you know, when I took this, I took that job. I knew it was kind of the end of my crypto career. Um, once this was over, it was just too high profile. Um, too much. Yeah, just too much. Um, so, yeah, you know, for me, I'm going to take a breather. Um, I still have a, I still love crypto. Um, I still have a very strong perspective on how it should work. Um, but yeah, the, the most I'll be able to do is, is point to kind of what we were able to do in our limited time, trying to hold the company together, trying to hold the team together. Uh, the incredible stuff that was built by Vlad and the enterprise team, the incredible stuff that was built by uh, Mike Mertz and like a band of high schoolers. No, I'm just kidding. But one of the key developers on station was, was a high schooler. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, everything we built on station. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll move on to something else. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, we'll leave thing behind. Thing. Leave behind, I think we've got to, I, I, think, I just want to say, like, you know, I'm just super proud of what, first and foremost, that, that the team held together. We didn't lose a single person after Doe got arrested. I mean, like, I think we lost like two accountants. Held the team together, grew the team. Um, it's hard to explain, you know, if you haven't run a company before, like how hard that was and how much resilience the team showed, frankly, like shocked that they even stuck by me. Um, and you, they stuck by you, the community as well. Um, and so, yeah, I leave and I think a lot of them will go on to build important things in crypto. And, um, I think we can all be proud of what we put forward. We did innovate. Uh, we leave behind products that, that were different and better than any other that were in the market. And um, I just want to say before I go, I couldn't be prouder of that team, uh, both in like their technical capabilities, their maturity, their resilience. Um, uh, the, the highlight of my career, the most challenging time of my career will we'll always I'll look back as a highlight of my career as well to be able to work with, with this group of people. And, and Chris, you know, having been through that, because I was in a space for about four or five hours earlier, and uh, we were kind of talking, uh, you know, a lot of those guys were Terra community, and, uh, you know, a lot of obviously the IBC and Interchain has now come to the forefront. Um, and part of their worry was, you know, now now a lot of people are looking at liquid staking and stuff like that. Some of that's going cross-chain IBC and stuff like that. Um, that there, there might potentially be vulnerabilities to the fact of IBC and, you know, so many chains being linked together. Um, you know, from the experience you've been through, do you think there's kind of risk to that? And, you know, do you think it's risk that can be mitigated? And that it's kind of worth the trade-off, basically, is my question. Yeah, you know, I think like the interoperability thing, it's a really good question. And we struggled with this a lot when we were talking about chain abstraction, because you don't want to abstract away the risk, right? You want to build this incredible user interface, but you also don't want to abstract away the risk of like, um, well, hey, you know, your stuff can be anywhere at any time, but there are different risk assumptions, risk assumptions with each of those different places. I don't think like, look, I'm not a technical person. Um, and so I can't speak to like, if there are technical risks to like, like if there's something about IBC that makes it unique, I don't have a, a strong perspective there, but I don't, yeah, I don't think it's, I think there are risks. I think people should be aware of like where their, uh, where their assets are and the risk assumptions they're signing up to. I think there is, you know, as, and this has nothing to do with just IBC, with bridging technology in general. Um, there is a risk with contagion that people should always be, you know, not cont contagion is not the right word, um, but like a, a chain effect. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like where something breaks yeah. on one chain, it could ripple through seven different chains. And even if you're not a cross-chain user, it could have an impact on you. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of stuff there philosophically that needs to be sorted out. I definitely don't have the answers uh, to me. We ultimately decided it was worth it just to push forward with the abstraction vision, uh, because if it doesn't if it doesn't work, it's then what are we doing anyway? Like, so um, yeah, I think yeah. it's a good philosophical debate to have. Maybe when I'm out of the industry, I can still come back and and I'll be able to speak more openly about some of that stuff.
Um, yeah, thank you, man. I bet you'll be able to add a lot of value because you, you pretty much came back to the similar conclusion because we kind of started the conversation saying, you know, all the chains need to work together. And, you know, a couple of hours later, so we kind of say, well, they're kind of saying, you know, but it can have X, Y, Z risk. But, you know, I was, I was kind of saying, you know, if there's a black swan event that's going to lead to that kind of stuff, you know, everyone's probably going down anyway. So uh, probably shouldn't be too scared of building stuff. Just it is worth thinking about those things, and isn't it, when we push forward and, you know, what's going to be the new race and you know what lessons can we take from this because you know as much as, much as it's been a hard thing from it it sounds like you know what you went through with your team and you know seeing it from the outside i'm sure a lot of people are going to have learned a lot of lessons from from what happened with you guys and you know how it can maybe be done a bit different in the future right um yeah for sure absolutely yeah thank you very much for that bro thanks for the info yeah thanks okay thank you meta uh last one rio we got you up here. Oh, great. Hey, thanks, thanks for bringing me up. Hey, I'm not going to jump on you too hard, Chris. Uh, j just a few yeah. questions, man. Are you, yeah. are you still constrained uh, from speak, speaking freely about the case and about what happened? Um, yeah, I can't speak about the case. Are, is it court ordered or are you just been told uh, by a just, lawyer? No, it's just like part of the settlement. Okay. So uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, knowledge, institutional knowledge that you have, probably better than anyone at this point other than Do Kwan. It would be nice down the road to kind of hear after the dust has settled, uh, your thoughts, what really happened, the strategy behind the case, why you were so confident in winning, and the fact that we lost. Also, why the fact that um, the most important person in this whole entire case is Do Kwan. And for him not to be able to testify in his uh, favor and, and pushing out the case or waiting for a new administration with the SEC or whatever. I mean, I, I think the, the community deserves to hear that. And, and I know there's a lot of questions that people have because uh, we're all in the dark pretty much. Other yeah, than we no, can read a, tran might... a transcript. I mean, it doesn't – that that's not the institutional information that, that people like me are looking for is what really happened. And, and, yeah, and, I know, and I know the reason why you stuck around is because you thought that you were going to make it. You were going to make this shit happen, and it, you guys were going to make the comeback. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd love to hear that uh, down the road. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, you. I'll give you a, yeah, I'll give you a little bit now. And, and, yeah, I could definitely sense that last time you came up, right? And so one of the reasons I don't take any of this that personally, especially when it comes to, like, the legal strategy is because – um, people have questions and I can't give them good answers. Right. And so you're left to speculate and, um, you know, there's no one who wanted to win that case more than me. Um, and probably no, uh, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't even have a chance to speak to him about that case. Um, um, but he couldn't be there. Right. Like that wasn't a decision. It was just a fact. And, um, if he could have been there, if there's any way, um, we would have tried to do it, you know, and, um, but, um, it wasn't possible, unfortunately. And so, um, you know, it is, what, it is what it is. It is what it is. He's going to have, Doe's going to have a chance somewhere <laughs> to do the case, to do the case with him, with him involved. Um, and it's going to be very high stakes for him because like you were talking last time, one's civil, one's criminal. And so, you know, the case that you wanted will happen, right? It just, it didn't happen in the one that I was part of. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it will happen almost certainly, right? Given the circumstances. And so, um, and that one's, you know, for him, even more important than this one. Uh, this one was. Um, so, yeah, I wish I could talk more about it, um, but I can't. Um, we, we went to trial and we lost. And uh, now we have to deal with the consequences of that. Um, I, the one, I, thing, I, the one, one thing I would just flag, though, um, Rio, because actually there is, there is something I, I would say that was a major factor where the tide turned, where things looked a lot different. And I think we forgot. We, I forget to talk about it. We didn't get to go to – so all of the fraud allegations – were not valid if UST was not a security. So, so keep in mind, UST was ruled as a security uh, in summary judgment, like in December, right before the trial, basically, right? 
or maybe November, you know, someone fact checked me, but towards the end of last year. And so we thought, you know, part of when, when I talk about like the different reasons to be bullish, a lot of it had to do with UST not being a security. And thus, there are no fraud. There is no jurisdiction for fraud if UST is not a security. Um, and so like, that's a, like a major, I think, underestimated turning point. That probably had more to do, not be, like we didn't even get to go to trial on that. Like that was a summary judgment. And so that was probably, I think, other than, you know, that was a major factor in everything uh, that doesn't get talked about because there wasn't, you know, a juicy trial to cover or watch. I, I meant to flag that last time and I forgot to do it. It would have been nice if, if you know, I, I agree. It would have been nice to, to fight that uh, beforehand, but, I, you know, I don't know exactly what happened with that. Um, it, it sounds like just reading between the lines that, you know, a big reason why you can't talk uh, more uh, than you have is is uh, Do Kwan still involved in criminal proceedings, and you don't want to mess that up for him or TFL uh, in that regards. Um, and I, I'm just putting that out there because that, that's the only thing that that kind of makes sense. That hey, look, you know, Do Kwan's going through some shit, man. So we can't really say a whole lot, and we got to protect our guy. Um. Yeah, I mean, like. Anything that happened at trial or, you know, anything that happens could be used in a DOE trial or anything so God, could, be, could be used in, a, in his trial. Um, uh, you know, there will be, I mean, I think there will be a point where I can probably say more um, uh, about like, we, we could get into like legal, like, like technical, what was happening on like on the ground day to day. Cause like there's so many decisions being made in a trial like that. I mean, we had an entire floor of a hotel that was just a war room and like tactical decisions being made on a minute by minute, hour by hour basis. Um, but yeah, I can't talk about it right now. It doesn't, it's not practical. Unfortunately. I, I appreciate it. I, I think everybody uh, here should uh, pray for Do Kwan and his results. The, the guy wasn't, trying to fraud anybody who's trying to build, uh, you know, a, a, a system that was going to change the world, you know, and it was a fucking unicorn, man. And we, that's the reason why we're all here is because it's unicorn. So I, I, I'm praying for him. I hope everybody else does. Um, I, I do have a couple more questions, uh, real quick, just, um, you know, all this IP, this Jax Nebula foundation, feather warp casts, the proof of reputation, uh, DAP that you were working on. Yeah. Uh, the enterprise payments, all these fucking cool dApps, man, that I was just saying, just waiting for them to come out. What's going to happen with that? What's going to happen with that intellectual, that IP? You know, if you could maybe uh, touch on that. Yeah. I mean, some of those were things that we were really bullish on, but they didn't work. Like we couldn't make them work. And that was, you know, that's one of the things about building in public and being transparent. Like Jax, for example, just we were pretty excited about it, but then it, it just didn't work. It, it could have worked, but it was not up to the quality that we would have, would have uh, required to, to take it public or to, uh, to release it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, the, the major project, a lot of them are open source. Um, the ones that aren't, again, will be in the sale process. Um, there are some of the smaller ones you talked about that, that never made it out. I don't know the exact status of that of those um well like I like nebula i remember you saying that nebula was basically finished you just needed a team to take it over yeah i think nebula is open source like we couldn't find a team to take that um i think nebula is open source though because that that had already been launched i think they got like, launched like one day before the dpeg um so yeah that's open source someone someone could take it and, and do something with it Okay, great. Uh, uh, just final question. Maybe you can talk about, you know, like, I, I feel like the uh, community was a, a little hoodwinked in the fact that, you know, we, we gave this grant uh, $150 million in Luna. Uh, and then we didn't really know where the case was, or if there was even a case against Terra, and everything was gonna be okay. And I feel like it was never really articulated the community. Hey, look, guys, we have this SEC case hanging over our heads, so there could be potential that this 
it gets clawed back or it gets uh, put in bankruptcy pre proceedings or whatever. How come there was no discussion about that to the community? I thought there was, you know, and that, that's where, like, I think some of us will just have to disagree on that. Um, I thought there was plenty. Um, and maybe because I'm living the trial prep so intimately for every day of my life for a year and a half that maybe it was like more, maybe I like took for granted how obvious it was. Um, but, you know, regardless of that, like we never spent a dollar of it and I did the settlement to burn it. And so there was no ill intention there. And I, I think in the end, there's no damage. You know, we, we were able to deploy a lot of liquidity because of that. Um, and if we had won, I think it, it would have really accelerated things, but yeah, you know, if there are people out there who feel like we weren't transparent enough on that, um, I'll take that feedback. I apologize. I, I thought that we were, I've checked back with the team multiple times and they thought that we were, um, I don't have time to go back through all the Terra spaces, but if someone wants to, if someone wants to go back and re listen to all those and, uh, you know, feel free, you know, if, if we weren't transparent enough on that, I'll, I'll, I'll own it. It's my responsibility. Uh, but I think we resolved it. I think we, we handled it in a way that um, there was no harm, no harm done. Nobody, nobody took a single one of those out of TFL. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not it wasn't necessarily monetary harm, but it was just hearts and minds harmed, you know? Yeah. I, I don't uh, understand that. I don't understand that so much because like the idea was, that it would allow us, like my, my thing was like, it'll allow us to like get scaled and get a position to really accelerate if we win. And that was long before we lost the first round, which was the, um, the um, UST as a security thing. Um, but yeah, you know, if people are upset about that, they can, just, they can blame me. Okay, just uh, one, one more thing. You said, uh, I'm just going to hold you to it, though. In, in the future, when, when dust settles, everything's worked out, you'll be able to have the opportunity to discuss more in depth. You, you mentioned there were some things to a few few guys ago that said, you know, things didn't really materialize uh, that you thought would. And, and um, I'm hoping maybe you can discuss that at a future date. Yeah, for sure. I can come back on once the dust oh. settles for everyone. Sounds good. Again, praying for Doquan. And uh, I, I know it's a tough job, Chris. Um, you did the best you could. And, uh, you know, all, all the shit talking. Um, I know this was fucking difficult, man. So good luck yeah, to you. All right, man. Thank you. All right. With that, we're going to call it. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I'll probably be quiet for a while. Uh, when there are major important updates, they'll come from... Um, you know, I'll try to retweet them or anything if you're following me, but I would definitely follow uh, the Terra account. Um, uh, and thanks for coming out. Yeah, appreciate everyone catching up. Appreciate everyone who took the time to come up and ask questions.